faster than any infantry, outmaneuvering the Marines. The Air Force has the battlefield covered, however tough the terrain. By taking to the skies with their fine-tuned senses, these fast and fearless flyers have the right stuff. When it comes to grabbing an aerial advantage, the sky's the limit for these special forces. A sweeping vista is all this airman needs to perform his precision maneuvers. Add some rocks to serve as a launch pad and observation deck, and this airborne assassin is in business. He operates freely over most of the Australian landscape, though he prefers open spaces to wooded areas that might foil his mission. Australia's largest bird of prey scouts whatever moves beneath his perch, carefully targeting who will die. This angel of death is the wedge-tailed eagle. They don't call him Eagle Eye for nothing. His vision is up to eight times more acute than ours, and with it, he pinpoints his prey. Once locked on, he gets airborne, never losing sight of his target. The instant he gets the all clear, he strikes with his massive talons. An eagle can spot a rabbit from more than three kilometers away. Its special forces eyes are almost unmatched among vertebrates. Although an eagle may only weigh around 4.5 kilograms, its eyes are about the same size as ours. Of course, these precision instruments need regular maintenance. It's provided by a nictitating membrane, a third inner eyelid. It wipes the eye every three or four seconds, sweeping dirt and bacteria away. It also shields the eye during flight and while diving through the air. The membrane is translucent, so the pilot can see through it when it's closed. This top gun spies a rabbit. As he plunges from the sky to attack his prey, the muscles in his eyes continuously adjust the curvature of the lens. These micro-adjustments maintain sharp focus and accurate perception throughout the approach and attack. And that's too bad for the rabbit. The eagle's two fovae, or centers of focus, allow the bird to see both forward and to the side at the same time. Its eyeballs, heavier than its brain, move separately, but they're too big to rotate much in the socket. A structure of the eye called a pectin may help nourish it, perceive motion, shield the sun, and detect magnetic fields. In North America lives another special forces flyer, the patriotic bald eagle. This majestic symbol of the United States, with a wingspan of up to 2.5 meters, mainly patrols near large bodies of water, scouting for fish. These special forces can glide 100 meters above the water's surface. And yet their eyes can see fish beneath it. That's an extraordinary feat, since most fish are counter-shaded, camouflaging them against air raids.
But these remarkable high-tech eyes register about 150 images per second. What we see as seamless motion, the eagle registers as a series of slow pictures, giving it ample time to lock in on a target. Mission accomplished for the majestic hunter. These special forces air warriors are made, not born. Young eagles can't see below water until they've grown a little older. An eagle without its eyesight is like a plane without an engine. His life and livelihood depend on it staying in good working condition. Fortunately, these aerial warriors don't seem to be subject to common problems like nearsightedness or farsightedness from which other creatures might suffer. All in all, with their superior vision, Eagle Special Forces dominate the airspaces they inhabit. For our next Air Force, we don't have to travel far from the Bald Eagle's nesting sites. This fleet is famed not for its ferocity, but its endurance. Their flight plan covers most of North America during summer months, but they tend to touch down at one very specific southern location in the winter. the monarch butterfly. These graceful orange and black flyers with wingspans around 10 centimeters decorate the skies. Their precise and epic annual migration is unique among insects. Their autopilot for their more than 4,000 kilometer journey locks onto the Earth's magnetic field and reads UV light through their specialized antennae. But before they can earn their wings, they must be born several times. As larval cadets, they're called caterpillars, munching on toxic milkweed leaves. They're voracious eaters, each one capable of consuming an entire milkweed leaf in less than five minutes. Each caterpillar is on a mission to gain 2,700 times its original weight. This prepares them for the next stage of their training. When they've eaten their fill, they suit up and become the chrysalis. That's their final step before becoming full-grown, flight-certified Special Forces butterflies. And that earns them a special privilege, the right to mate. This one won't be mating here now. Instead, he'll set out on his migratory mission and wait for spring. He has no choice. When autumn comes, the milkweed plants grow scarce and lose their nutrition. Plus, the cold can kill him, so he'll follow the warmth. The Monarch Air Force numbers in the millions as they plot their course to sunny Mexico. They never need a flight chart. Their multi-purpose antennae are all they need to orient themselves. Parts of the antenna are sensitive to the scent of their fellow pilots for an in-flight communication. Other light-sensitive areas track the sun, while others sense temperature, wind direction, and the planet's magnetic field. 
All of this instrumentation works together to help these special forces navigate around hazards and flawlessly find their destination. During their five months in Mexico, monarchs remain grounded, enjoying a well-deserved rest. From November to January, they'll hang together and won't move a muscle. They live off the stored fat they gain before they begin the migration. By mid-February, when the weather starts to warm, the huddled butterflies begin to peel off and search for nectar. At last, it's spring, and the mission to mate begins. It will be their final mission. The butterflies die after that, but their directive to return north is carried on by the next generation of recruits. It's a complicated maneuver. Three generations make a one-way trip. The fourth completes a round trip. Monarch courtship can last 16 hours or more. They mate only at the very end. Exhausted from their journey and the act itself, these adults die. Their lives lasted six to eight months. In a few weeks, the caterpillars will don their flight suits to rule the skies. By the time the fourth generation of butterflies returns to the north, the milkweed has replenished and they can start getting fat again. Monarch butterflies conduct this mysterious multi-generation migration thanks to their infallible onboard magnetic guidance system. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen, all for free. No subscription required. On the other side of the world, an Air Force with a shorter range but much more frequent missions. The Australian jungles are home to a squadron of specialized pilots. Fruit bats. As their name suggests, this larger breed of bat fuels up on fresh fruit juices rather than chasing down insects. They prefer to fly at dusk. When the sun starts to go down, they fire up their engines. Every evening, they travel from their roosts to their feeding grounds and back, navigating by smell for long-range missions and by vision on closer range. The fruit bat has the keenest vision of all bat species. By combining sight and smell, they can locate food and fly clear of danger. In the morning, the squadron returns to its hangar. In all this commotion, it's hard to locate fellow flyers. Mothers call to their pups and wait for a response. Unlike bug hunting bats, fruit bats don't echolocate.
They make about 20 different sounds and leave scent markings to let their squadron mates know where they've been and what they're up to. Their eyes work very well, both by day and by night. By sleeping in clusters in the light of day, they're more apt to spot a predator and sound the alarm. Their biggest enemy, the white-bellied sea eagle, wages an aerial assault on any bat that hasn't reached the safety of the hangar. motion of flapping squadron of bats scrambles the sea eagle's visual guidance system. He doesn't know where to strike and aborts his mission. But he's a very patient adversary and will bide his time until he sees a fruit bat lagging behind the rest. The bats hang on branches till the hot sun starts setting and their predators head to their bunks. Fruit bats can roost as far as 60 kilometers from their feeding grounds. Without echolocation, the bats depend on their eyes in the gloom of dusk. Like many nocturnal animals, fruit bats' eyes contain a reflective layer called a tupatum leucadum that makes the most of incoming light. But the tupatum of a fruit bat is even more advanced and is more commonly found in certain fish, crocodiles, and marsupials. The Air Force has reached its designated target, the bats will spend all night eating. The bats crush the fruit with their blunt teeth and suck the juice and soft pulp. As they chew, they spit out the seeds and in the process plant new trees. Their furry flight suits collect pollen grains, which the bats unintentionally spread during their fruit gathering patrols. So fruit bats perform a peaceful mission as special forces nighttime pollinators. When done, they'll return to their roosts and rest up before their next mission. Our next airborne expert is a special forces tracker. His Air Force skills are highly effective and he carries out crucial duties. He's an indispensable part of his habitat, but as a soldier, he suffers from an undeserved bad reputation. Inhabiting most of the so-called New World, members of this Air Force are a world-class cleaning crew. On the beaches of Costa Rica, olive ridley turtles gather to lay their eggs. While the event is an open invitation for predators, this Air Force has a different mission in mind, black vultures. Most turtles are exhausted after their journey and some don't survive. That's what the vultures have come for. They will clean the corpse to the bone. These undertakers of the animal world rid the beach of decaying meat and prevent the spread of disease.
To locate their food, they use their nostrils. Black vultures and their relatives, turkey vultures, are usually death's first responders. Their sense of smell gives them a hearty head start on other scavengers. Black vultures scan the area below them from around 300 meters. This Air Force patrols beaches where vegetation is scarce, supplementing their scent detection with a bird's eye view. But death isn't always on the menu. Turtle hatchlings make an easy, lively meal for black vultures. They know the same beaches where the turtles laid eggs will soon produce thousands of defenseless hatchlings. It's something they can always depend on, as inevitable as death. Only a few turtles manage to escape these predators. On the other hand, the turkey vultures prefer forested areas and never touch living flesh. On patrol, gliding high in the thermals, this Air Force tracks plumes of odor wafting up from decaying animals. Circling, they home in on their scent, moving closer as it gets stronger until they find the source. Today, it's an easy mission, a deer carcass out in the open. But their sense of smell is so keen and the odor of death so distinctive that they can find a meal as small as a dead rodent buried under a pile of leaves. The turkey vulture patrols around 30 meters above the ground while searching for food. He hones in on the scent of ethyl mercaptan, a gas produced as flesh just begins to decay. He can probably discern it in concentrations as dilute as a few parts per billion. The turkey vulture's nostrils and olfactory bulb are larger than the black vulture's. That anatomical difference gives turkey vultures an advantage over black vultures, who they might compete with. But black vultures are stronger. The turkey vulture squadron might arrive on the scene first, but they must chow down fast or risk being chased away. Though practically anything dead is fair game to a vulture, turkey vultures prefer freshly dead mammals if given a choice. They hold the cadaver down with their blunt talons as their sharp beaks tear into it. Their bald heads have no feathers to get soiled when they stick their heads inside the carcass. Vultures couldn't perform their special forces work without a strong immune system. They seem to be resistant to most foodborne diseases like anthrax and cholera, and by consuming spoiled meat, they prevent disease from spreading. Vultures are an air force that thrives on foul air. They're a disrespected but indispensable cleanup crew. Staying in the new world, we're enlisting a special forces pilot with amazing aerial acrobatic skills. A pilot who can hover like a combat helicopter. The members of this small but formidable Avion Air Force are native only to the Americas. Hummingbirds. The planet's smallest birds average about 10 centimeters in length. The smallest of those is only half that size. 
This bird's mission, to collect sweet nectar inside the flowers. Their tiny, powerful wings, flapping at up to 50 times per second, make a humming sound. The wings let them hover, fly backwards, and reach speeds of up to 50 kilometers per hour. A hummingbird's brain is about 4% of its body weight, the largest brain-to-body size in the bird kingdom. Much of those mental resources are devoted to vision, the hummingbird's most important sense. Because a hummingbird is an aerial ace, able to change his flight path on a dime, he needs sharp eyes to avoid mid-air collisions and also to chase down small insects. It must eat the equivalent of about 3,000 fruit flies a day. Even though its brain is oversized for such a tiny bird, a hummingbird's eyes outweigh its brain. By comparison, our brain is almost 100 times heavier than our eyes. Though hummingbirds have tiny eyes compared with us, they have many more photoreceptor cells, which help them see better. They can also see ultraviolet light. Their iridescent and rainbow-colored flight suits suggest that color plays a crucial role in their lives. Mostly, it seems, they depend on color and UV to attract and select potential mates, but mostly their eyes are critical navigation tools. The hummingbird's eyes are calibrated for flight. They're positioned to maximize binocular 3D vision straight ahead and monocular vision on the sides and up and down. Depending on what they see and where they see it, they can make instant in-flight course corrections to avoid danger or find that sweet flower. Besides regular eyelids, they have a clear nictitating membrane that covers their eyes like flight goggles as the bird speeds through the air. With their sharp eyes and color vision, you would think that color is what they use to select flowers. Well, you'd be wrong. Despite their ability to see color, these puny pilots don't rely much on it. When staging an air raid on a nectar-filled flower, they're more concerned with the flower's location than its color. Once they find flowers that are sweeter or faster nectar producers, they note the location and return to those flowers regardless of color. In their high-speed flight, hummingbirds gauge distance by noting how much objects enlarge as they approach. It requires quick mental processing and isn't the way many other animals perceive distance. Everything about the visual guidance system of the Hummingbird Air Force is geared to enable the birds to travel at top speed without colliding with anything around them. Proportionately, hummingbirds are the fastest and most maneuverable vertebrates in the world. Their small size makes them potential prey for anything from frogs and owls to domestic cats, but their top-notch aviator skills makes them hard to catch. One thing they can't outfly, however, is habitat loss.
So far, we've seen fighter pilot eagles, great monarch long-range aviators, amazing vulture trackers, and even hummingbird helicopters in our Special Forces Air Brigade. Now we'll check the qualifications of a missile specialist operating on the coasts of most continents. This Air Force lives in huge colonies like this one in Murawai, New Zealand. This rock on the blackened shore is dotted by nests belonging to gannets. Great numbers of these birds live on the coasts in highly organized colonies where they care for their young. Every day starts a new mission over the sea. They deploy to hunt for provisions, fish to fuel themselves, but also to regurgitate and feed to the cadets that haven't begun flight training. Their highly specialized optics help them get the job done. The gannet's optical system enables the birds to see their prey at a distance from the air and just as sharply as they plunge high speed into the water. That ability to shift focus between air and water is their secret weapon. It helps rank the Gannett Air Force as one of the most successful at sea, with an average 72% kill rate per bird. A Gannett's forward-facing eyes give the flyer superb binocular vision to accurately judge distances. These aviators seldom fly solo missions, as social birds work best as a squadron. This squadron has found what it was looking for, a sardine bait ball. A gannet focuses on his target from 30 meters above sea level and plunges. From that altitude, the gannet reached speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour before hitting the water. Upon contact with the water, his lenses change shape from spherical to oval. The focal change takes only 80 milliseconds, the fastest of any bird. From air to underwater, they never lose sight of their prey. Their high-speed plunge sends them as deep as 20 meters below the surface, giving them an advantage over other fishing birds. In the waters off Africa, a Cape Gannet squadron engages with their meal. Besides their customized flight goggles, a Gannett's flight suit comes equipped with safety features. First, Gannets have no external nostrils. Instead, they're concealed inside the bill to prevent water from being forced into them. Next, air sacs under the skin in the neck and chest cushion the bird's high-speed impact with the water. This is one hard-working air force. An adult gannet weighs about 3.5 kilograms, but must deliver about 2.5 kilograms of fish to each chick every day. The victors return to their airfield, a home base that can lie as far as 400 kilometers from the hunting spot. Wherever their assignment takes them, gannets are always mission ready. 
It's no wonder that these strong flying, fast diving, sharp focusing bombardiers enjoy success in their naval air stations all over the world. Moving inland from the salty seas, we find our next air force patrolling freshwater ponds, rivers, and swamps. These special forces may be among the planet's oldest flyers. Stationed worldwide, apart from the coldest regions, these skilled air veterans are one of the greatest aerial success stories of all time. Dragonflies. Dragonflies, with their close relatives, Demselfies, are the animal kingdom's top guns. Succeeding at 95% of their hunting attempts. They owe much of their ability to their all-seeing compound eyes, which enable them to view every direction at the same time. Plus their wings, which gain them speeds of up to 30 kilometers per hour. Like the hummingbird, their flying skills include hovering and even flying backwards. The dragonfly's compound eyes cover most of its head. Each eye, among the largest of any insect, contains up to 30,000 optical facets, or omatidia, that collect images. Flying dragonflies have fewer of these facets. They can't see color as well, but are most sensitive to light and shadow, which is essential to their mission. The dragonfly might see the dusk sky as a bright background, and even tiny prey flying against it would show up clearly for him to pursue. Small movements and small silhouettes make up the dragonfly's target. And because its prey flies fast as well, the dragonfly's optical system processes the visual input in less than a five hundredth of a second. Compared to us, the world moves much faster for a dragonfly. Where the human eye can decode 60 images per second, that would be slow motion for a dragonfly. They can process an unbelievable 300 frames per second. A dragonfly detects different kinds of lights with different parts of its compound eyes. The upward facing eye sees short wavelengths like blue and ultraviolet light. The underside of the eye sees longer wavelengths, like green and orange. Its sharp focus only occurs directly in front. The sides are better suited for picking up motion. While we have three kinds of light-sensitive proteins in our eyes that let us see color using combinations of red, green, and blue, dragonflies have between 11 and 30 of these proteins. This emperor dragonfly has spotted a fly. She locks on and pursues it.
Mission accomplished. Practically nothing escapes her gaze. A dragonfly can eat up to 100 mosquitoes per day. When the sky is clear, the mission's a go. The Dragonfly Air Force has had plenty of time to hone its skills. Dragonflies were some of the first winged insects to evolve some 300 million years ago, and they have become miniature masters of the skies. To review our final Air Force, we travel to African High Lakes, where their special forces assemble. Lake Bogoria and Lake Natron, though toxic for most life, attract thousands of these birds. Feasting on the local hot spring algae are lesser flamingos. A spectacular gathering of up to a million and a half come here to find mating partners. The algae gives their plumage its characteristic color. And the way they eat the algae brings them even more distinction. These birds don't rely on power, but on a delicate sense of touch. It all starts with their specialized beaks, which enable them to filter the nutritious algae from the toxic water. With their touch-sensitive beaks, they always know exactly what they're putting into their mouths. While they dine, their eyes provide an early warning against predators. So they can safely fill their bellies with the 60 grams of food they need. The odd shape of the beak helps it function as a sophisticated filter. Unlike other birds, the upper part of a flamingo's bill is thinner than the lower. And unlike most mammals and birds, their upper jaw moves while the lower stays in place. To eat, they hold their heads upside down in shallow water and sweep from side to side. Their beaks are lined with rows of plates covered with tiny hairs through which they strain food out of the water. Their piston-like tongue pumps water in and out of the beak five to six times a second. Backward curving spines on their tongue help guide food to the throat. To fine tune the system, nerve sensors called Herbst corpuscles under the upper and lower bill ensure that only food goes down the gullet and not grit or anything inedible. They use their upper jaw to manipulate larger foods like small crustaceans. This amazing system of touch controlled filtration gives them a real advantage, opening up a generous feeding area that no other animal can exploit. but the feeding flamingos are in danger of becoming food themselves. To help them avoid that, flamingos rely primarily on their numbers. By keeping in touch, there's less chance that any particular bird will get plucked by a predator. On an individual level, each flamingo has great vision, so that's a lot of eyes watching for danger. 
Their eyes contain a structure that creates a line of sharp vision that helps them spot predators at a distance. Even when the flamingos are eating, head upside down, they make sure to keep an eye on their surroundings. In this position, they can see an almost 360 degree panorama and overlook the horizon. This is what they're watching for. The fish eagle launches an attack. But the flamingos are on to him. The Flamingo Air Force rises like a big pink cloud. The eagle will have to try another time. When it comes to survival tactics, one branch of the special forces rise above the rest. These are the air forces. Eagles rely on their sharp vision for their surveillance ops. Their eyesight, eight times more accurate than ours, can penetrate water. The structure of their eye gives them excellent perception ahead and peripherally. Monarch Butterfly's epic journey relies not on sight, but on their ability to sense magnetism. They navigate flawlessly to their destination without ever having been there before. Like monarchs, fruit bats fly in squadrons. They rely on sight and smell to avoid predators and find food, which they do in the dark, thanks to their highly reflective eye tissue. While bats are on a mission to find juicy fruit, nothing makes a vulture's mouth water more than a fresh corpse. To find it, they follow the scent thanks to an enlarged olfactory bulb. The scent of death, just few parts per billion, dispatches them on their mission. A hummingbird is after something much sweeter and zooms through flower beds looking for nectar. Its eyes weigh more than its brain, and it needs that brain to gauge how fast it's flying on its mission to reach its favorite flowers. The gannet relies on vision too, as squadrons of them conduct dive bomber missions over the open sea and as deep as 20 meters below the surface. Fast focus lenses assure a successful operation. Over freshwater, one of the planet's oldest air force chases down fast-moving insects. The Dragonfly's ultra-high-speed visual system lets it draw a bead on a bug faster than an eye blink. Flamingos take a more laid-back, tactile approach. This pink squadron touches down on algae-choked lakes and uses sensitive beaks to filter tiny prey from the water. Even though they feed upside down, flamingos always keep their sharp eyes peeled for predators. These are the special forces that command the sky. Whether they're on patrol, on the hunt, or simply getting from place to place, these air forces employ an array of specialized skills, tactics, and maneuvers to accomplish their daily missions.